terms of the topic that you chose, mate, talk us a little bit about it, the 10,000 hour rule. How does it apply to building a brand? Um, well, I, I guess when starting YouTube and um, social media, I took the approach that um, for me personally, it wasn't going to be an overnight success. Um, I think if you saw my early videos, which hopefully no one has, they were filmed off a webcam, the audio was terrible, the camera quality was terrible, um, the punchlines didn't make sense and they were overall pretty average and um, I was sort of aware that my videos probably would take a fair while to get better. Um, so then I just sort of got inspired by, I guess, that 10,000 rule um, where if you sort of work on something for two, three, four years consistently, um, you'll slowly pick up the skills to improve and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, that was the approach I took. I sort of em embraced imperfection. I, I knew that my videos were really terrible at the start. Um, arguably, if you read some comments, still terrible now, but I feel like slowly but surely um, I've built up the skills with editing, the skills with sort of knowing how to um, whip up, especially YouTube content. I'm still learning in all other verticals, to be honest. For those tuning in that haven't taken the plunge yet, uh, where would you start in terms of social media these days? Is it TikTok, YouTube, Instagram? If you had to pick one, where do you reckon you would start these days? Oh, yeah, I wouldn't be bothering with uh, half of them. I think it would just be straight to TikTok, <laughs> to be honest. Um, yeah, for me, uh, in 2016, when I fired up the YouTube channel, I think it was sort of after Vine and maybe Musical.ly sort of started, but I, I just wanted to do that sort of 15-minute, longish form content and, and youtube was certainly the place where where i sort of grafted and grinded but um yeah like the the technology i had to film like my webcam and my laptop and um the editing software the 60 dollars editing software that i downloaded just doesn't cut it in this day and age so I, i'd never um, recommend people to go down that route um when you've got an iphone and um TikTok has the editing software that it has, or you can download CapCut and whatnot. Uh, you can just create so much better, faster, greater content. In terms of uh, key considerations, what are some like big rocks for, for a successful week or day um, for, for your brand, mate? Um, for me on YouTube, it was just... <laughs> It was just consistency, um, like trying to nail that one video a week for a long, long time uh, was just the goal. And as I was saying, like the videos were very average and they had hints of humour and hints of a little bit of ability, but I was aware that, um, you know, it might take 700 videos for me to chip away and get to the good stuff or start producing some half-decent um, content. And... I think if you asked me in 2016, um, you know, the trade-off is 700 videos, but you'll have 70,000 subscribers, I still probably would, you know, sign that contract. I, I would accept that. I, I saw it as a bit of a, um, yeah, a bit of a, a learning curve. Like that was my apprenticeship was those 700 videos. Um, so, yeah, for me, it was like definitely consistency. What yeah. about from a reflection piece? Like there's a lot of analytics out there, there's a lot of data, there's a lot of subjective stuff as well. How do you sort of marry it all up into measuring well, what is a good video? Is it purely engagement numbers? Is it mate hitting you up saying that was hilarious? Like how do you sort of gauge success, I guess? Oh, geez, it's, it's a tough one. Like, I think views is definitely one way to look at it. Um, uh, but you can sort of frame it any way you want. And for me, it was definitely views for a, a couple of years there. Like, I was sort of living financially off just AdSense. Um, and for a couple of years, it was sort of like, geez, if this is a, a 10 of 10 video, I am in all sorts sort of financially. So there was a stress attached to um, each video and each yeah, each view, I guess. Um, for me now, I've tried to, and you probably, you'll hear this from like a lot of YouTubers, I've tried to sort of take away my happiness from like the view count. How much is your week structured and how much is it spontaneous from a day to a week sort of point of view? Do you have themes to each day in terms of content creation uh, and, you know, refining content, uh, editing content? Does it work like that or is it more just go with the flow? Nah, I'm a bit of a hack when it comes to structure and discipline and whatnot. Um, you know, take my rig, for example, uh, compared to these lads. But, um, yeah, look, look for me, I work best 
potentially not best, but I, I'm sort of a, a week by week proposition and I can sort of see what my week is before I get into it. And um, there was times this year where hopping on the Google calendar and having a little diary certainly helped. But for me, I can, at, at this stage, I can sort of keep it all in my head and um, not have that big of an issue. So yeah, I, I sort of do work very impulsively and very sporadically. Um, and some weeks that benefits me and some weeks I just get worked into the ground because I've left things too late and I haven't exactly structured things um, properly. 